before we go, before we start our, our question and answer, I, I'm going to tell you guys a secret. There's going to be an Overwatch 2. They really? No way. You're kidding me. When does it come out? Uh, TBA. Oh, okay. Yeah, nobody nobody knows. There is this Brazilian DJ character I'm really interested in. Uh, yeah, he's so cool. <laughs> wow. Then some... How many of you guys are excited for Overwatch 2? Yeah. Yes. Uh, the first mission is with your boy here, so. Yes, absolutely. Dive in. Okay, learn about your boy here. Okay. <laughs> It's going to give away a little bit. Of, it's give, yeah. Just a little bit. I'm, I'm not going to spoil anything. It was but, a really great announcement. Uh, I was so, none of us really know this stuff. You know what I mean? When they call us in to record, they're like, yeah, you're going to be doing this. You're like, what's it for? They're like, <laughs> uh, we're recording. <laughs> <laughs> and we're recording. Uh, uh, yeah. But it was, it was truly a shock for me. And uh, I think this dude over here killed it in the opening mission. So, no, I was, I, not, I was not announced in Overwatch 2 yet, but okay, I am got in it. the game. So, thank okay, you. Okay, got it. Got it, got it. They did, they did say that all 31 characters will be returning. And I've been saying this for a while. I think that with the new PvE kind of mission thing, mm -hmm. we're going to see definitely his first mission is kind of like in uh, Sao Paulo or something, or Rio de Janeiro. Uh, Rio. Rio, yeah, yeah. Rio de Janeiro. Rio. So I have a feeling that we'll probably see why they were kicked out of Junkertown. This is mm -hmm. all speculation, by the way. So why they were kicked out of Junkertown and also like the Queen's Jewels heist. I think that will be a cool mission for Roadhog mm -hmm. and Junkrat. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be good stuff in the pipeline, I know it. Yeah, um, when I was recording, I, I had 1,000 questions uh, that went unanswered, <laughs> so get ready for that, uh, but uh, it kind of, uh, for me, uh, recording, it answered some questions about timeline and where and how it all started, so yeah, that's cool. So Josh, have you already played the, the demo, the first mission? I was at BlizzCon a week ago, and I got to, I did get to play, but I watched, and I got to watch it be played, and the game looks amazing. It's very, and I, I still think the game is in a very early, early alpha stage. I don't think that's part of the reason why it was TBA and they didn't give it a, a release date yet is because they're still literally building the game. Yeah. And I think that uh, giving Blizzard's track record, when it comes, it'll be super polished and it'll be probably be better than all of us expected. So I'm excited for it. I know you guys are too, right? Yeah. All right, so if we want to go ahead and start forming a line here, let's be respectful, no elbows, no punching. I mean, maybe a little punching. Some kicks. If it's a working punch. Sweeping kicks only. <laughs> We've had a great time so far hosting FSCW with, uh, with everyone in the commentator. So if you guys also want to come out tonight and check out the wrestling. It's at, uh, yeah. yeah has anybody been out to FSCW? Yeah. You have to, to, to check out your boy, your, your voice, if you love the Roadhog voice. Yeah. Uh, my favorite wrestler, Peter B. Parker, will be there also. It'll be amazing. So... Peter took a big dive last night and scared us all. It was good. So. Johnny, you got to come check it out, man. I do. He, he yeah. invited me yeah. to come announce this, too. And I don't know. Johnny, your, 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 your girlfriend's whole family is here. What better place than to <laughs> take them to professional take them to wrestling, wrestling. <laughs> tonight? You guys ready? You guys ready <laughs> up for that? She's like, no. <laughs> all right, looks like we got our first question. How you doing? You don't have to Pretty go. good. How about you guys? Hey, really good. Great. Really good, yeah. I, I want to say thank you for coming out. Happy it's to be little, here. Little Thanks, little Madeline. Fun. And uh, well, I had a question for both of you. Uh, what's your do you, uh, favorite game mode? Favorite, you know, event, uh, PVE, or favorite arcade mode? Uh, Lucio Ball. Oh, duh. <laughs> uh, Junkenstein's Revenge. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, of course. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I think that the Junkenstein's Revenge is really cool because it kicked off kind of those PVE events. Lucio Ball was first, though, wasn't it? Very yeah. first. I didn't even know. What yeah. I, yeah, like people were like, oh, I'm playing Lucio Ball. I'm like, what? What is that? <laughs> and it's like your own mini game. I was like, oh, I've got my own mini game? <laughs> I still do that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> when it went to competitive, I was like, oh. Now God, I have cool. a rank. <laughs> Hello. Hi. So hey. This question is for both of you, kind of in general. So, how did you get involved with like the first game? Like, how did you come to find out about it and just get into the first game in general? Well, for me, uh, a friend of mine uh, had uh, he he took out his laptop and he's like, "I need to show you this right now," because uh, he's been with uh, Blizzard and all their IPs for a long time. He's like, "This is a game that's going to be coming out." And he showed me gameplay, early gameplay, like six months before it was probably, maybe even right when they announced it at BlizzCon, he probably like came and showed me. And it was like, uh, 
this uh, PvP that was so like fast paced, but the graphics were insane. It looked really cool. And he was like, dude, this game, dude, it's gonna be so amazing. I was like, cool, cool, man. Uh, <laughs> and then later on, like, uh, I got my uh, an audition for uh, Lucio, and I, I sent it out. And I, I, but the game wasn't underneath uh, the Overwatch or Blizzard. It was like. A, a, Prometheus. It was called Prometheus, yeah, that was a code name, right? So I didn't even know what the game was. But then I got a email saying that Overwatch um, really liked, uh, or the people from Blizzard really liked my audition and wanted to just straight hire me. And I was like, cool, cool, wait, what? What, what Overwatch? I started this little kind of like, that's really cool, I'm booked on something, but I was like, what is Overwatch? And I, I kept like going through my mind and then like that flash of my, my roommate like showing me that uh, gameplay trailer, I was like, huh, maybe that was it. And I looked it up, it was it. And I was like, I went to my roommate and I was like, hey man, you remember that game you showed me that you said it's gonna be super amazing? I just got a part in it. And he goes, no way, dude, <laughs> no way. <laughs> and I was like, way. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think uh, I knew it was gonna going to be a big deal once like he gave me the insights so yeah i had a similar story i remember watching i played world of warcraft since like burning crusade and uh yeah all right for the alliance <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's right these horde scum no I'm just, kidding. Yeah. <laughs> just kidding uh and i remember when they announced overwatch i remember thinking wow that looks really cool you know and I was working and I got the audition. Though sometimes these auditions come at like six at night, the night before, and they're like, it's due at noon tomorrow. And you're like, man, <laughs> did not a pretty quick turnaround. I left. You missed. And so, <laughs> <laughs> like I'm Ronald Reagan. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Assassination jokes aren't funny. Anyway, so, <laughs> so uh, I remember getting the audition and I left work and I, bought, I didn't have a mic at the time because I was using my roommate's mic, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I left work on my lunch break to go home and record my audition. And I did it and I remember thinking, I think I know what this is for because- You had I, an idea. I had an idea because it said Blizzard in it and I was like, this has to be for Overwatch mm. because, and I did the audition and funny story is I sent two different takes and one of them had a little bit of processing on it and my agent was like, that's great, but I'm not gonna send them that. Well, she accidentally sent the one with the processing. So when they got it, they're like, oh my God, this guy's voice is, can he really do that? So deep. So you deep, put like right? a pitch on it. Put a little, a little bit of reverb, a little bit of pitch on it, so it went a little more. And, uh, and then they're like, oh, we sent you the wrong one. And so Blizzard was like, mm. <laughs> But then they're like, can he really do it? And so I sent them the original take, and they're like, oh, yeah, it's fine. Come on in. Yeah, great, great, great. <laughs> so thank God. I was like, all right. And then I got to meet Andrea Toyes and Michael Chu and Michael Roche, all those guys, mm -hmm. the first day. And from that point on, my life changed. I'll never forget reading the script and seeing the, come here and get down, sit down. I was like, is, is this going to be like Scorpion? And then I was like, am I like the new Scorpion? You yeah. know? And they're like, yes, that's how we want you to say it. Go yeah, ahead. yeah, yeah. So the rest was really history, and it was an amazing experience, and it's just gotten better as the days have gone on. Yeah, so. yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. So, mm. so what is your general opinion on Overwatch 2? Like new heroes, new abilities, new maps, and stuff like that? I think it goes back to what I was kind of saying earlier, that I think Blizzard is known for their polish in mm. games, right? Mm -hmm. And I think what we saw was such an early reiteration of the game that... It's, it's kind of hard to judge it in its current state. I think I know what they want to do, and I've been saying this for a while, that we didn't get a lot of the lore in Overwatch 1 and background story of the characters because they were saving it for another medium to tell mm. these stories. And it looks like Overwatch 2 is going to be that medium. And I'm really excited to see what happens because the graphics are all updated, and it's, it's the same game, just buffed, you know? And, and they're having a hard time even them, like, like it's not an expansion, it's an, not an add-on, it's its own game, but the first game will still have the same thing, so it gets a little confusing there, but I trust in the company, and I trust in them that they have a vision of where they want to take this, and I think also having it leaked a little bit early, because it was leaked like a week earlier on accident, like they sent out an email and something happened, and so people got a couple screenshots of the game, broke their hearts a little bit, and maybe it forced their hand to show them a little bit more than they wanted uh, to, uh -huh. and like I said, 
they didn't give us an, a release date for a reason, and I believe that that's because they're going to polish this thing up. They're going to work on Overwatch 1 still and make sure we still have another big Overwatch League season coming up when all the teams are in their home towns and everything. So I think there's a lot on the drawing board. I'm excited to see where it's going to go. I don't think they'll let us down, and I see nothing but a cool future happening for sure. Thank you. Yeah, yeah thank you. Uh, so one, so one question for uh, for you two. So, it, so there's gonna like be like new skins on Overwatch 2? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, they already said that all the skins you bought in Overwatch 1 will carry over to Overwatch 2, which is great. You know what I mean? That's an amazing thing. Cause then it's like some of us spent a bunch of money on getting loot boxes and cosmetics and. It wouldn't really be cool if you spent all that and then they weren't done. I'm assuming they'll be. He already, like Lucy already has a brand new suit in Overwatch yeah. 2. Like, I got green hair. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> Dope. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. I need your guys' help settling a debate between me and my friends we had before we walked in here. Okay. Perfect. All right. So, you know how when you play Lucio, yeah. there's two modes you can play him on. You can either play him in, you know, he makes your view and your healing or faster. speed. Yeah. Yes. So, what mode do you think you have to play default? Do you think you sh so you should be on the healing aura until you need to take the speed, or do you think should, or, or do you think you should have the speed aura until you need to heal someone? So, I would believe right at the beginning of the game, if you're definitely speed boost everybody where they need to be, yeah. and then turn those heals on. Yeah. That's it. That's how you play it. What do you think? Uh, he's the boss. <laughs> No do, better place than from the source. Yes. Yeah. How do you play? So he, my friend plays uh, healing until he needs a speed, and I play speed until I need well, healing. Well, uh, right, at, right, at, right out the gates, you don't need healing. Yeah. Everybody is at 100%. That, well, like I'm saying like mid-game, like I'll still oh. be speeding around until like I see, oh, you know, Roadhog needs <laughs> healing. Yeah. Even, yeah. Though, even for some reason, you know. I yeah. Self-healing. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think the heels are the most important. Yeah. So always be looking out for those heels. Got you know what amazes me is watching the pro players know the routes they can take with the yeah. speed boost yeah. and just leap oh, yeah. from building to building to building. It's insane. Oh, yeah. yeah. Those are insane. And we've all had that time when there's a Lucio who's just dancing around the payload and like, why won't you die? Like, <laughs> slow down. Never. Audio medic. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. I love it. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Hey, it's DJ. Uh, so, do you have a personal favorite uh, legendary skin for like each uh, category tank uh, damage and support? Yes. Oh, you want to know what it is? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Roadhogs, uh, I love, love, love the Rudolph skin. Uh, yeah. uh, no one else is Rudolph. So <laughs> me and Torbjorn are bringing Christmas back um, yeah. for Roadhog. And then for, I love, I play a lot of uh, Moira, and I like the moon skin. Yeah. It's like David Bowie. I like that one. Uh, and Diva, I use like uh, Scavenger Diva a lot. Yeah. <laughs> So for sure, happy Halloween. <laughs> um, so those are some of my favorites. Uh, I think recently the Pacific skin to me was like super epic for Lucio. <laughs> One person, <laughs> she's wearing it. Uh, no, <laughs> uh, and um, I thought it was really fun. Uh, I, I call him Medusio, but he's not Medusio. His snake's on his head. I was like, that's clever. <laughs> Medusio. <laughs> that was super fun. Uh, and Genji's, um, like, his white tiger skin? Or That's like, sick. Oh, man, that, that one, like... And Symmetra's demon skin. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, Anjali, it's like, how are we going to compete with that, Johnny? You know what Not I mean? Like, all. they have... Her and Carolina have the same body type as, as Sombra and Symmetra. Yeah. Johnny doesn't have back length dreads, and I don't have a well. I have a dad gut, but not like <laughs> you know what I mean. We can we can make it happen. We could, well, you know, <laughs> we got some big shoes to fill. Uh, yeah. So thanks, man. Thanks, thanks DJ. DJ. My friend. Hello, Rody. Hi. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so my question is for Josh, but you can chime in if you have a. If I feel like it, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> We know you voice Roadhog, and you also voice Tun in Agretsuko. Yes. 
Was that a total coincidence or was it on purpose? You know what? I believe in fate. My grandmother passed away a couple years ago and all over her house her entire life was little pig statues, right? And what? she was the only one in the family who really liked pigs. And for whatever reason, Mimi is what we called her, Mimi Louise. And my daughter that's gonna be born in three weeks is gonna be called Sunny Louise in her honor, yeah. Um, Oh, I know. So, <laughs> oh, my, oh my God. So, I hold on. I promise myself I won't cry. So. <laughs> but I believe, you know, that Mimi's up there pulling some strings. Mimi was a hard worker, okay? Mm -hmm. And the day she passed away, I went to work because that's what she would have wanted. Oh. I died, but did you go to work? You know what I'm saying? I was like, yes, Grandma, I went to work today. So I obviously, the way my voice register is, I don't book. Deku from My Hero Academia or Nickelodeon commercials or Starburst, you know. I'm never doing summer ads. I'm always, this October. Like, it's always, it's always very, very demonic. But I, I, I'm okay with being typecast as a pig. You know what I mean? I, I'm okay with that. So I think Director Tone and Roadhog are two good hogs. They're the top hogs in the world. Mm -hmm. Name a bigger pig other than, like, Porky. You know what I mean? I can't exactly. Do it. Okay. <laughs> but I think it was uh, it was really cool. And Patrick Seitz is the director of he also directed some World of Warcraft sessions with me and some Overwatch sessions, I believe. And he was the voice of Scorpion mm -hmm. previous to MK11 when they unfairly cut him out, but that's a different story. And so Patrick called me and was like, hey, I want this kind of Archie Bunker jerk voice for this terrible chauvinistic misogynist pig. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, oh, thanks for calling me, Pat. I really appreciate it. You thought of me when you thought of that. So, But we had a really good time doing it. And yeah, I think it's been, it's, it was ironic, right, that, that I play Roadhog and Tone, both these big high-powered pigs. So I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. That's what matters, that you guys have a good time watching and enjoying these things. So I'm flattered every time I hear it. Thank you. All right, thank you. Hello. Hi. Hey. Hi. Um, I'm wondering, what's your favorite, um, like, Roadhog or Lucio voice line? Can't stop, won't stop! <laughs> Roadhog's funny because he's the only character who has, everyone has, like, three greetings. Like, Lucio's like, hey! And he's like, what's up? And the other one's like, how's it going? Roadhog's like, hi. <laughs> Second one, hey. <laughs> Third one, it's literally, <laughs> I'm gonna say it rotates my favorite voice line. Today is probably violence is usually the answer. Yes. Thank you for your question. Thanks. Hello again. It's the legend. Oh wow. Do you want to tell the tell the crowd? Or you tell them. You tell them. You tell them. I mean, I, I, so Sam here um, asked me to sign her arm yesterday so she could get it tattooed onto her body, and also Josh as well. So if you look now at her arm, that is now worth $30,000. That's exactly right. <laughs> it's me and Josh's signature forever. Forever. So My we hand. have to keep a good reputation for Sam. That's exactly right. <laughs> yes. My hand. Yes. We're, we're all, our minds are blown. Yeah. My hand was sweating when I did it. I was like, <laughs> don't mess up. What's my name again? Uh... <laughs> but the, the artist who did it did an amazing job, amazing honestly. Job. Got yeah. the line work really good. So it's amazing. If you she, get a chance. She's going to collect all 32? Is yeah. Like, yeah. Your yeah. arm is going to be like a cast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like a giant cast. Uh, Sam, we were both flattered that you did very that. Flattered, that, was yeah. that was so cool. Yeah. So, uh, My question is, what are your favorite characters in Overwatch besides the obvious answers? Good question. Um, well, for me, I there's voice and then there's just uh, regular badassery. So uh, I like Matt Mercer's smooth, oh. buttery, milky voice. Oh. And I love a good cowboy. But I, I would like, if I could be, I would probably play a lot of Genji. That's because he's just a badass. Yeah. yeah. I want to say, voice, voice wise, I really like, um, I like Reinhardt a lot. I think Darren DePaul did such a great job. He's so powerful. Gameplay wise, I love playing, uh, I like playing D.Va a lot. <laughs> yeah, you know? D.Va's really fun to play, and I, and I, and I like playing uh, Widowmaker. You know, mm. so I, I'm not that fast on my flicks. I play in PC. I'm getting there. You know what I mean? I'm getting there. I am. 
I am the best in the cast at the game, so. I mean, he is. Uh, nobody's going to deny it. Uh, I think Charlotte might a little bit. She, she, she's been training a lot. She's got, she's got her hard. Her and Tom have been Earned practicing enough. hard, you know. Tom yeah. was like, you cannot let Josh beat you. You must yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I'm going to wait to be trained by one of the lead players and then uh, jump in and just demolish Josh. That's probably true, because I did get to play with S uh, Sinatra and Super, the current SF Shock world champions and Team USA's MVP. So. Wow, is, that, is there a longer title for that? <laughs> the title for that excellence is actually just called Josh Peterstorff. So I don't know. <laughs> you can see it on YouTube, too, if you want to see when I played with the Shock last year. It was That's really cool. cool. Thank you. One Thank you. you had the right answer. Thanks, Sam. <laughs> Hello. Hey. Hey. So my question is, so Blizzard has been very intentional by adding diversity and representation with Overwatch, and I'm just wondering what it feels like to be a part of that. So for me, I mean, growing up, I auditioned for all kinds of stuff, and... I think a lot of it was stuff that I was like, uh, one of these again, you know what I mean? I think the, repu the representation of brown on screen, the color brown, it hasn't always been something to aspire to, I think, in my life. There's always been just maybe a handful. And so uh, I never thought in, in the gaming industry it would become such a, a big thing. But to be brown and a hero is something I think we all would love to see more of, you know, and to be Absolutely. a part of that is Absolutely. Like amazing. Yeah, thank you, Kai. But yeah, truly, uh, I'm, I'm honored to represent what I represent. Yeah. For me, it was really important. Um, not, I love the diversity. My character, obviously, being a white character, was what I really liked about Roadhog was the body positivity that he kind of promotes in the community. Yeah. I think that's really important. That's a huge part of diversity. And to see so many men and women and people who may not identify with genders cosplay as Roadhog uh, and feel confident and feel proud means the world to me. And I think that that is the heart of why this game is so special, is that not only we do we have heroes from all races and shapes of life, brown heroes, uh, that they announced the new Shojourn. We got yep. a, finally got a black a black woman who's going to be a great hero, and and I think that that's that hits home because it's somebody you can identify with, and there's there's kind of somebody for everyone, you know. Yeah. Even, especially the Omnics of the yeah, world. Especially you know? the Omnics and the hamster. <laughs> <laughs> so Alexa. Alexa, exactly. <laughs> the Alexas of the world. Yes, and Echo. They they showed some stuff with Echo, so I can only imagine. You missed again. <laughs> <laughs> They got closer that time. Yeah. Jesus. Hey, Rich, you want to fit? No, just kidding. What are we paying you for in the back? So, But I think that that's the greatest message the game has brought to the world. And I think that's why it's done so much. Mm -hmm. And it's gone so far and people have connected with it so deeply. And I think it's a, um, a, an example for, for everyone else. So, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Proud Thank to you. be a part Great of it. Thank question. you. Great Thank question. You so Thank you so much. Hello there. Hello. Ah, fresh so, from Gotham City. Yes, right from it. So my question is, so over the past few years, we've seen this game come from its announcement, which obviously generated a bunch of hype being a Blizzard title. We've seen competitive introduce to the game. We've seen the creation of the Overwatch League. We've seen all these events the game has brought. Now an announcement of Overwatch 2. It's become a huge cult following that nobody really could have expected it to be this big. So when you first, when you first signed on to do the voice acting, did you ever think it was going to be like this crazy of a phenomenon? You can only hope. In voice acting, you hear no a lot. And it's a professional no. It's not a personal no. And you're going to hear no maybe nine out of ten times. Um, and you hope that that one out of ten that you get is a role that resonates as large as this. I know I speak for myself. I never could have dreamed that Overwatch would have been as big as it was to be like the Star Wars of games for a couple years. And it was just such an honor to be a part of that. And, I, you know, you, you can never prepare for these things, and you only hope that when it does come, that you're, a, you're at a point in your life when you can be a decent human being and a role model for other people. And I think that it was kind of like a stepping stone for that. Like, hey, if you weren't ready to be responsible in your life, Josh, you better be now, you yeah. know, so. I had, uh, I've been doing on camera, I've been going for on camera basically since I was, I don't know, 18 years old. And basically, 
I didn't really have any inclination to do voiceover. I, I, I was like, that'd be cool if I got some voiceover gigs, but my focus was on camera. And so when Overwatch uh, came and I, I, I booked the role for a video game, I was like, oh yeah, nobody's gonna, they, they'll play, but they're not gonna know me. You know, they'll just know the game. And that's cool. I mean, I got to do some work on a cool game. And as it got popular and my friends would play it, a, a friend of mine was like, Johnny, I've never cared about anything you've ever done, but Overwatch is amazing. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, cool. And uh, so it, it, it started slowly in this kind of like um, uh, slow simmering pot. Is like if I, I would go out and my friends would be like to one of their friends, hey, this is Johnny, he's Lucio in Overwatch. It, it, it started to be this. Really? Hey, hey, man, hey. Like, I got that reaction so much, and I was like, what is happening? Like, People you hated in high school yeah, like, suddenly messaged you, hey, buddy, how yeah, you doing? Like, I like, still hate you, blocks. Like, <laughs> it was just like this weird phenomenon that you could see in their faces that something I never expected. And then when the, the video came out of all of us, and that went, like, super viral, people came up to me out on the streets and knew my face with that voice. So now I transcended just the voice, and now it was me people were coming up to uh, as if I was an actor on television that they knew. Like, that was blowing my mind. And that's when I knew. I was like, this thing is like another beast, something that's never happened to a cast in the way it did, you know? Really, it hasn't, in a video and, game at least. And so that to me was like mind-blowing. And even still is. Like, every week it's somebody being like, hey, man, you're Lucio. And I'm always honored. I'm appreciative, you know? So, yeah, I never would have thought in a million years, but here, here we are. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks, Penguin. Ah, uh, hey, Big Papa. What up, <laughs> Top Ramen? What up? Oh. How's it going? Good. Very good. Good. <laughs> I got to work on it. Push I got to work on it. Bustio. <laughs> Bustio. <laughs> Bustio. Come on, let's so. go high. Bustio. Oh. <laughs> Lucio O's. Oh, not bad, but not great. <laughs> so, for the two of you, what is your least favorite character on the cast? Oh, wait, like, oh. on the cast? God, As I hate, characters, I hate not Keith the Silverstein, voices. I'll say it here. Keith Silverstein, <laughs> you scum. No. You scum, I always say this, but I love Keith Silverstein to death. He's Torbjorn. He's great. Uh, and he's I, great. I love, he's so funny. Right. But, you know, the thing about, uh, you, you say in the cast anyway, like, everybody is so, in their own way, a wonderful, unique character and person, and it, it's, it, it's not like you get to sometimes work with such a, a group of lovely human beings who all in their own right are, are always, like, nice and open, and, I, yeah, I don't know, man. The cast, to me, has been like a family. We go to Fio's and yeah. have hamburgers, like, once a week. He always has a pool party, and I'm always like, yeah, I'm there, <laughs> you know? It's great, so... On the, on the cast front, but in the game, I mean, I'll always go with Symmetra, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, same thing, same answer. I love everybody in the cast. For in-game, honestly, who I play least with, I play the least with, like, Genji and, and, uh, and Lucio. You know what I mean? The <laughs> Because well, yeah, yeah, I, I suck you know, honestly, as Lucio. Like, honestly, I'm legit, I'm really bad as Lucio. So. I have never <laughs> once played as Roadhog. It's okay, so. see? And look, and we're bros. And we're bros. We're bros, you know what I mean? And we're bros. <laughs> but okay. if I did play a lot, I'd play Roadhog. Oh, thanks. And it is one of my things that I do, <laughs> I do, I do play. I'm a healing Lucio. I'm not like the speed man. So I'll, yeah. if you, I'm on your team and I'm Lucio, you can count on some heals. Uh, absolutely. It's got sweet. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks, Top Ramen. All right, this one's for Josh. Okay. So what are your thoughts on the dynamics of the Junkers? Do you really hate him, or do you think they're just a little bit more than friends? You know what? I, I've seen the, uh, the ships that people have done with Roadhog and Junkrat together, and I, I don't care. I think it's great. You know what I mean? Whatever you guys want to do, it doesn't bother me. Yeah, you whatever know what you I mean? guys want to do. Everybody What's do. funny to me is that the gay uh, characters in the game isn't the guy in, like, the fetish mask and leather straps. You know? <laughs> 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 it's, like, it's not him. Wait it's a minute. Right. Yeah. Roadhog's super, they're like, he's super straight. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, what? So... Um, but I always, I don't have a problem with that at all. I think that's the benefit of why this game is so powerful because it allows the fans to create their own storylines and hope 
these things happen, then we get little treats about Soldier and, and Tracer, obviously, and stuff like that, and um, even Symmetra being on the spectrum. You know, I think there's a little bit of something for everybody there. Yeah, and it's really cool that everyone gets a, a little piece of the representation pie. Yeah. So I just am like, I just wish they'd draw his fingers a little smaller. That's about it. So. <laughs> and that's as far as I'll go. <laughs> Thank you. Cool, man. Thank you. Thanks. Hi. Hello. Um, I was wondering if you had to pick a character other than the ones you, pl you act as to be your roommate, who would it be? Roommate. Oh, roommate. Right. Somebody really clean. You know, I like um, in in real life. Uh, I hang out with Gaku Space a lot, who's Genji, and he is the sweetest man yeah. in the world. Like he really he's got bad. a wonderful like uh, saucy like ego, but when it comes down to it, he's an honorable, loving human being. He's very honorable. Yeah, and sure. and uh, he would make a great roommate. Yeah, I'm gonna go with. Uh I was going to say, like, maybe Symmetra. You know what I mean? Oh, She's I'm, very tidy. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. Know? And I've been to Anjali's home before, and we've gotten over there, and it's a very tidy home also. <laughs> She's very giving. and uh, She's yeah, very sweet. generous. She's like a big... Anjali is really like a big sister yeah. to everybody. She has been in the acting industry for a while and has a okay. lot of on-screen credits, kind of like Johnny. And, and She's incredible. She was a great woman and a great human being, and she's somebody I'll definitely look up to. So I'd have Anjali as roommate yeah. for sure. Thank you. Yeah. Symmetra, and she'd just be like, I'd be like, bring the teleporter to vacuum the floor. It's like, <laughs> you know, Roadhog lives in a literal pig sty. Like, <laughs> Somebody's got to be the clean one. You've seen his house in Junkertown with him and Junkrat? Yeah. It's not very clean. It's, they live in like a garage. It's <laughs> hi. Hey. Um, hi. Good to uh, see you. Yeah, you too. Um, so what's it like voicing, uh, like, Lucio and Roadhog? There's, there's so, like... There's a lot of characters, so what's it like voicing and having like interactions with the other characters? I mean, being um, in the booth, you, I mean, there's always this, I think at the beginning you're like, it, it's so funny because you're going to bring something to the table, be vulnerable and say something and do the line. And I think there's always just as an actor, you just kind of have a moment where you brace yourself and say, is that right? Did I do that right? Yeah. In your head or just in your body. <laughs> but I, I think working with Blizzard has been great because Andrea is just like, no matter what it is, she's like, okay, great, good. That was wonderful. Okay, we're going to take a minute. And then when they take a minute to go over it, you just hope that they're like, we love it, not, okay, we're going to do that again. <laughs> right? But uh, being in the booth and being Lucio, I think it's finding that truth and that sincerity, right? Uh, and I think for me, finding that sincerity in his voice, uh, I have to be standing up. Some people can sit and do voice acting. I can't do that. I have to be up and I have to be loose and I have to be ready to just like, woo, woo, you know, like <laughs> use my, I use my body a lot for Lucio and I always get off mic because the mic's here, and I'm like, whoa, and they're like, get on the mic, please. But I'm like, I gotta move, you know? So uh, for me, that's like the vibe of Lucio is like uh, this energetic uh, person who's just ready to, to go at any moment. So I have to kind of get in that place in the booth and um, drink a lot of coffee, you know? <laughs> You're telling me. <laughs> uh, Roadhog helped me quit smoking cigarettes, you know what I mean? Um, because I remember, thank you. Thanks. I haven't had a cigarette in like six years. So, um, and because I realized the first session, like we took a break and I went out to have a cigarette and I was like, I don't know if I can do this anymore. <laughs> like, um, because it was such an intense voice. He's the lowest register I could possibly pull off. Um, and he's totally shaped after like Dr. Claw meets Megatron. You know what I mean? It's kind of the best way. Because Dr. Claw was like, I'll get you, get you next time <laughs> and I grew up with that every day because Inspector Gadget was on right before real Ghostbusters <laughs> so that was um, it was a big deal and for me it's true I sweat like a literal pig in the booth you know what I mean and I felt embarrassed because I went in there I was like am I out of shape or like is this normal like it's fine do you want to turn the air on I was like yes a brisk 58 please <laughs> in the studio. Can I get another script? I sweat all over it. Seriously, I can't read like, it. I felt bad for whoever had to use the headphones after me because <laughs> they were just drenched in sweat when I was done. Um, but that means that you're, you're putting in the work. And to me, that was the physicality of putting some physicality into the, the acting because voice acting is tricky. It's very rarely in acting, in voice acting, do they say, pull it back. 
You know what I mean? Mm. Very rarely. When we did Teenage Dad <laughs> on his thing, there were a couple of times when I was making these crazy faces, and Johnny was like, that's great, it's great. Just chill it out just a little yeah, bit. Right? Yeah, let's bring it back. <laughs> move, stop moving your eyes so much in the yeah, camera. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, okay, um, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, there you go. Don't move your eyebrow. Perfect. And we had this yeah. fake mustache we put on. So. If you haven't seen it, it's on my Instagram. Uh, yes. Josh does a phenomenal job. As Thank <laughs> you. You did a phenomenal job. It stars Richard Dreyfuss is in a, a short that we're in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we can brag about that. We can brag about it. Oscar award-winning, Academy Award-winning yep. actors anyway. are in our shit. <laughs> But I think that that was, uh, for me, the physicality brought him to life, made him sound believable. Yeah. Big, meaty, beefy. Yes. Thank, Thank you. Good Thank luck you. on the baby. Thank oh. you so much. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Oh. Hi. Hi. The cavalry's here. Um, so I know that um, the Overwatch team has documented some of mo uh, some moments in our history in animation, and I would like to know what your favorite moments in history that you have documented in um, Play Overwatch. Your favorite cinematics. You know, uh, I recently, after this last cinematic, uh, stuff started making sense to me because every uh, every one I'd be like, oh, cool, but where where is this in the timeline? Like, what's what's going on? And so after this last one, uh, I've started re-watching them. And uh, there was, uh, I honestly love uh, Eastern philosophy and culture and like a lot of that stuff, I'm really into it. And Genji's and Hanzo short, for some reason the family feuding there, the, the, the brother, like there's something there that hits me every time. So that one I would have to say, for now is my short till I get my own. <laughs> I never thought a gorilla could make me like want to cry. You know what I mean? <laughs> Winston wait, wait. does that. God, Crispin puts such an amazing job to Winston's voice, and and Elise too. That May, the new cinematic, that tugged at my heartstrings. It was a Doug. really good one, you know. And I think it's a testament to everyone involved, the animation guys who labored away doing that. Anthony Robinson is the chief producer director of a lot of the Blizzard cinematics. And him and his team did such a f fabulous job on that. Uh, Roadhog and Junkrat had their cinematic, but I had one line in it. So I was like, <laughs> I just at the end, I was like, idiot. The end. <laughs> like, da 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 da. <laughs> roll the credits. I was like, so I think that the new, in terms, I obviously, other than my character, the new Overwatch 2 thing, that was amazing. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was incredible. And it was really a testament good. to how strong the animation, the writing, and the voice acting, when all put together, can really make something special. Thank you. Yes, yeah, thank you. thank you. Hello. Are there going to be new characters in Overwatch 2? Because my nephew and niece, his favorite character is Winston. Uh, I mean, Winston will be back. Winston sure. will be back. They didn't. I, I can only. We can only say what they've already announced. And so, I know that the next hero is supposedly supposed to be Sojourn. Sojourn? I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. And that's the uh, uh, the black woman character with the gray hair, and she looks awesome. It has like a gun for an arm. Looks really cool. Pretty and then we cool. also saw somebody else, Echo, Yeah. who is like a flying robot. She's an Omnic or something. She's an Omnic, yeah. right? Yeah. But I'm wondering if, where's her personality come from? Is Echo yeah. somebody we knew from the past? Or, hmm. Who voices her? Do we know? I do not know that. Interesting. But I, they have, those are the two newest heroes that have been officially yeah. uh, revealed, I guess would be a good word for it. But there will definitely be an ongoing addition of characters, yeah. as they, there always is. All right. Cool. Until yeah. we get Jetpack Cat, I'm ready to go. Jetpack. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi. So I have a simple enough question. Okay. Uh, what's your guys' favorite Overwatch League team? Oh, San Francisco Shock, by far. It's pretty good. So I went down to Houston Outlaws, treated me like a king, so I'll always give it to them. <laughs> Treat me good, I'll love you forever. <laughs> and that's not a knock to any of the other teams, they're all amazing. Yeah. Um, but the shock reached out and they gave me free sweatshirts. I mean, give us free stuff, we love you, that's it, <laughs> the truth comes out. <laughs> Josh loves free clothes. Yeah, <laughs> so. The key to my heart is sweatpants and hoodies. The key to mine is food, just give me some delicious food and uh, there you go. I was really proud to watch the shock in particular, uh, 
bounce back because I got to, like I said, I got earlier, I got to meet Sinatra and Super right before they went live in season one when they were still training and they were, I think they were still 17 and they weren't even allowed to play. That's why. Jeez. So I got to play with them and I got to kind of watch their evolution and I gave them a really good pep talk uh, that night. And I like to tell myself that they remembered it, but I remembered it. And I was. <laughs> They're I like, Josh, who? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know what he said. What the hell is Roadhog talking about? <laughs> but I remember telling them, hey guys, you're entering a phase in your life when it was kind of when a lot of drama had happened with a couple of the Overwatch League players and they did some really dumb stuff and got kicked out of the league, et cetera, et cetera. And I remember telling them, hey guys, this is your chance to shine on a professionalism level. Remember that the world is watching you and you guys are doing great right now. Keep your hands clean, stay out of trouble, and just be proud that you got this and be an example of professionalism and good role models to people because you guys are already there. And they all kind of nod their heads like, wow, okay. And I was like, you may not realize this now, but in a couple months, you're really going to see how true this is. People are going to start to look up to you and expect you to do the right things in your life. So, Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Oh, hello. 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 Um, so I was wondering what you guys um, think, like what are your favorite like head cannons or theories about Overwatch and Overwatch 2? There's this, I sent it to Michael Chu. That's how serious I was about it. There is this comic, maybe some of you have seen it, and it's a quick couple pages of Roadhog, why he has the piggy sticker on his gun. And it's because they thought he had a daughter possibly and that she... I'm gonna like start crying. <laughs> do it, do it. So they do thought it. That maybe his daughter had passed away, and he was very sad about that, and that's why he's very like recluse in the way that something bad happened to him. And they talk about that all the time. And like the small lore we've gotten about Roadhog is he says stuff. The world deserves us. He's just this guy who's alone in a shack in the wastelands of Australia or New Zealand, and is just alone for a reason. Tragedy has befallen him, and so I like to think that he has a really redeeming arc and that's why he wears the mask is maybe to hide from the world or that something terrible happened to him that he needs the mask to live but he was a hero for somebody else but he ended up taking the blow you know what I mean like he tried to save somebody and and he was accidentally saved I don't know that's my headcanon it's really sad I'm sorry. <laughs> man Michael Chu, Michael Chu doesn't have to do anything I know. now. You wrote it for him. True story. We were at BlizzCon, and I said that, you know, maybe he wears a mask to hide from the world. And Michael goes, I think you just gave me a new idea for a line. <laughs> That's what he does. $50,000. Uh, I mean, there's... Uh, I think... Um, I mean, I, I like... I'm interested in what Lucio does on the side. Like, what's, what's he getting into? Like, you know, what, what kind of parties is he throwing? Who's he hooking up with? I want to know. Don't we all want to know? I, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. No, so. uh, but just also about his, his family and his father, and there something goes deep in, in Vishkar, and like, what happened? Any little bit of Lucio, you just, just give it to me, please. <laughs> Anything. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Hello, Hello Diva. Um, lame question, but if you could design new skins for uh, Lucio and Roadhog, what would they be? Tiny little booty shorts. <laughs> I mean, all the girls get really great at causing. What about Lucio? Just tiny little booty, booty shorts. Let those dreads go. Yeah. Like a right said Fred outfit. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Just really accentuate that butt. Uh. There's yeah. two. Yeah. I'd love to see Roadhog as like a Ghostbuster. And I have the amazing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was fun. I have a print available at my table where we'll both be after this panel um, yeah. that has that. And then another one I thought that would might be more realistic is if, you know those giant T-Rex inflatable suits? Yeah. Well, what if, what if Roadhog was in like a giant Pachamari suit like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Oh. That'd be cool, right? He's just like... <laughs> Yeah, 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 that's fun. This huge Baymax. And then that's all it takes is a pin, and he's completely deflated. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was actually a really good question. <laughs> Caustic, hey. Hello. Hey. Oh, Quick question, lore-wise. Why do you think so many people know about Junkrat's treasure? And do you think you can actually gain something from it? That is a great question. And I think that is one of those questions that we're gonna have to wait until Overwatch 2 to get officially answered. But I firmly believe that the whole jewel, Junkrat's treasure, the Queen's jewel, and getting kicked out of Junkertown all have something to do with each other. You know, because 
it's, it's, like, it's like Johnny says, the continuity in the timeline skewed. We don't know. I don't know when that jewel heist took place yeah. before. And you talk to Michael Chu, he's like, oh, it's clearly obviously here. And I'm like, yeah, Michael, like, like, <laughs> Michael. Um, Help us. <laughs> but I'm hoping that we get, they've already announced that the way the PVE missions are going to work, they're going to be in different parts of the world. You know what I mean? So I'm hoping that at one point in the game, we do get to see maybe that mission when they stole the Queen's Jewels or when they were kicked out of Junkertown. You know what I mean? And I think that that's ripe for the storytelling right there. I would assume, again, all speculation, not confirmed, but I would assume that that is a definitely a storyline arc that they'd be playing with. I mean, it makes sense because somehow Hanzo, of all people, have found out about it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. so. And McCree, too. McCree has a line in game. He goes, isn't there a reward for you, too? And Roadhog's like, shut up. Like... <laughs> I'll just be over here. <laughs> so, uh, it'll be interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. So, um, <laughs> what's your favorite um, tank? Great question. Orisa. Because mm. it's the shield and the, and, the, and the green vortex ball all the way. It's such a great combo to go with Roadhog. Okay. And, uh, Okay. Reinhardt, yeah! <laughs> Justice, middle name Justice, <laughs> last name Reinhardt. Yeah. Who's your favorite tank? Yeah. Diva. Diva! Diva! Diva. <laughs> Cute. Most definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. Diva's well needed. That infinite okay. shot in the, the revamped defense matrix recently, A-OK. -okay. Super cool. Mainly because she has a bunny theme, and my favorite animal is bunnies. She's also a, a female gamer, just like me, although I don't game as often as her, nor as good as her. <laughs> but she's awesome. I she's agree. Also she Asian is. And Asia's my favorite continent. Oh, perfect. Yeah. She's Korea, too. She's from South Korea, so she's probably a huge like, K pop fan, too. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> Absolutely. And I'm a fan of like this one K pop group. I think it's. BTS? Yeah, actually, no, not that one. Okay. Not the, the other one. The other Josh. one. Sorry. Blackpink. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, not only is Diva awesome, but I think you're awesome, too. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. You're, you're welcome. welcome. Thank you. All right, so I don't mean to be the bad guy, but we got about five more minutes, so I think... Speed we'll, round! If we can get through these questions here, that'd be... 57, that'd be 97, 85, 85, 95. Got 25 <laughs> over here, 27 over there, 28 over there, 95, 25, 35. So, wait, four, no, wait, 45, what? 55, 95. Right. <laughs> so, for one dollar. <laughs> always wanted to be an auctioneer, to yeah, just try it one time. I think you just sold Johnny. One dollar, One dollar me. Cents. What did I buy? <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Um, so mine's going to be a really easy one and super quick. Um, so me and my drunk rat always get caught in like really weird cues because <laughs> we always just get like this weird like three to seven people want to play with us. Um, but in the scrimmage, if you ever get thrown in a scrimmage, are you one of the people that finds the enemy team to dance at them or do you work on your aim? Hmm. hmm. Got to tell you something here. Uh, I know the people who run around in the scrimmage and they all dance in front of each other. I'm not that guy. Oh. I will shoot you in the scrimmage. <laughs> I'm petty. I'm tiny. I don't care. I need to hear the tink. You know what I mean? <laughs> I got to hear the tink. Yeah. So. And the way they made that kill sound when you tink is uh. funny. They said it was somebody flicking like a glass beer bottle. Like, bunk. And they're like, we tried like 600 sounds and that was the one that stuck. Kind of like the water drop. Whoop. Whatever. <laughs> Definitely dance for me. Anything that goes against what you're supposed to be doing, I'm doing it. <laughs> the killer, the dancer. Good to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. 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 Um, so obviously we've gotten some cinematic shorts about certain characters. Other than Lucio, what is one that you would like to see? Well, other than Lucio, I uh, <laughs> I kind of want to see I want to see a, a Farah one. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I think Farah has a cool story that she has to be told. What do I want? Diva has a huge cinematic recently too. Yeah, she had yeah. like a whole squad of people behind her. Her wow. cinematic was cool. I don't know. I think I mean some of the newer characters. You know. Um, 
Sigma had like that little like animation of him going like nuts, but his story like really intrigued me of like, yeah. what happened to this dude? You know what I mean? Before he went absolutely out of his mind. So that one was one I was like, it, that one sucked me in. So Black it was holes that. and revelations for yeah. sure. Yeah. So. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, hey. I know like you, like all the voice actors, like all you guys are like pretty much friends, but. Who do you think, who do you have, like, the best relationship with in, like, the group in Overwatch, like? Who, who do we get along with the most? Yeah. I mean, of course, anytime I'm with Josh, I'm like, easy, easy city, easy street. <laughs> yeah. But also, Bro. Gaku Space, it's yeah. always fun to watch him because he's like... He's so cool. He's a real-life ninja, too. He's a, he's yeah, real he really life. does. He's like, he, he teaches... He was in Westworld Season 2. Yeah. You guys know that? Yeah. Yeah, if you look at Westworld Season 2, he has a brief cameo in that. Yeah. He, he has a couple of speaking lines, too, I think. So he, yeah, he's, he's uh, I think, somebody that you, you just don't expect. You, don't, you never know to, what to expect from him uh, when I'm hanging out with him, and that's always super fun. Um, he was yeah. at my wedding over the summer, Gaku was, and Carolina and Symmetra and yeah. Keith, and um, it was just, I love the whole cast. I couldn't pick anyone, but yeah. if I could pick one that would be like, it'd be Anjali, big yeah. sister. Yeah. You know what I mean? Once she's again. She's been so warming and welcoming to everyone. Yeah. So. I also have one more quick question. What do you think of fa like fan skins, when people like, when fans like make skins for like the characters, what do you think of them? I think they're great. I love think it. That's, that's how skins are born. Yeah. And I think... All the Blizzard developers who make the skins, they, everything starts as a fan skin. Yeah. And the cool part is me and Johnny have had the opportunity to go to Irvine in California and see the Blizzard headquarters. And there is no doubt there is a hallway that will show you the next six yep. months of skins yep. that are coming out. So we've seen stuff that we're like, oh, that's coming? And they're like, yeah. yes. Shh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's cool. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And then they make a sign a waiver and they yep. they hit the back of our legs with burlap reeds. It's yeah. Very <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. But we don't have to sign the contract. The beatings are real, though. It's fine. So I have a question about the when you guys were in the recording studio. Um, what was it like on the day that you all recorded? Like, you know, when you get pinned by a Reinhardt. Oh. <laughs> uh, what was it like in the recording studio when you just had to just scream into the Great mic? Question. Well, I mean, those are called efforts, and efforts sometimes come at the end of a, um, a session because they're vocally taxing. Uh, those are usually some of my favorite things to do uh, because I commit too hard, I think. <laughs> and a lot of people come up to me and always say, man, like, when, you, when you're on fire, man, like, what did you do? That's crazy, man. I was like, I was in that booth pretending I was really on fire, <laughs> you know? Like, <laughs> what does that sound like? I don't know, but I'm going to figure it out. Or being electrocuted. Yeah. You got to get into it, you know? Uh, so those are some fun ones to do. And I, I, I usually don't know where they're putting them or, like, what's going to happen. Uh, so you have to do your best to be like, okay, they tell you, all right, you're falling off a cliff, but it's a short fall. So it's like a, you know, a quick yell and then a silence. Or it's a long fall. Like, you're, gonna, you're going for a long time. So they kind of set it up for you, and you just do your best to really give out these exertions. And it's, I think they're fun, but yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I always you. hear my exertions on Roadhog, and I'm like, where did they get that yeah, one? Is that like, me? What does that mean? Because it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. what? I was like, they record I me in the bathroom? Yeah. I was like, what are they doing? <laughs> is that I had beans, I had beans and rice. I had oh. <laughs> oh, it's just Josh. He's just dumb. All right, last question of the day. So I'm curious, what are your guys' experiences with accents and languages? Um, like for Lucio especially, you know, when did you kind of, when in the process you, did you find out that you're going to have to speak Portuguese? And for, for Josh, I mean, Australian is kind of a notoriously difficult accent to master. Obviously, when you're grunting, it doesn't really matter. But what about the rest of the time? And, and how did you practice and figure that out? I was fortunate enough that when we did Roadhog, while he may have been based in New Zealand, uh, and a lot of his skins were focused on the Maori culture, uh, the Polynesian kind of, you know what I mean, masks and tattoos and stuff, that they weren't necessarily looking for an accent for him. That was never in the specs or anything, and it was... Same with Luzio. Yeah, they weren't looking for an accent because, and that may have... Lock, gridlocked him a little bit too much because without that, then when I do do the Australian accent, like she'll be right, or I'm beach D's, bruh, you know what I mean? 
then it's special. And you go, okay, now we're starting to see his heritage kind of leak out a little bit. And I would assume it's kind of the same maybe with Lucio, right? Well, for me, uh, there was no spec, so I just did me, whatever my uh, interpretation was uh, of the sides. And then when I found out where he was from afterwards, after I had recorded, well, at the beginning, he was like, he's from Brazil. I was like, I don't have a accent. Is that like, you know, I, that's what my thought was. But over time uh, on Twitter and, and um, <clears throat> on Instagram, people kept asking, uh, when is Lucio going to speak Portuguese, right? And I kept getting those. I kept getting those, right? <laughs> so uh, at some point, I, I saw Michael Chu at BlizzCon, and I was like, hey, Michael, so you want to do some, are we going to do some Portuguese lines? And he goes, you want to do it? Oh, I didn't want to ask. I didn't want to force you. Like, I, yeah. And then, like, two weeks later, I was in the booth, and I was like, um, oh, man. I don't speak Portuguese, right? right. <laughs> At all. Uh, I do speak some Spanish that's pretty broken, but what they did for me, which I think is really great, is they brought someone from Brazil who works on the, uh, uh, at Blizzard, and they brought in a dialect coach, and I literally had 10 Portuguese lines-ish to really master, and they made it short, and they made it like sweet, and I literally spent four hours trying to make sounds I've never made before in my life, <laughs> out of my nose, and like, but that's voice acting, right? Like, I'd be like, say it again, say it again, say it again, and I'd like, I, you find it, right? You find the, these things, and then you put a performance on top of that, right? I couldn't quite do it like Lucio because he pronounces things differently in English, right? And if you go Portuguese, it's gonna sound like, I don't know, wacky. So I told the guy on the phone, I was like, hey man, you gotta perform this in your best Lucio so I can hear those sounds. And so I had a guy like, you know, whooing, like <laughs> screaming Portuguese Lucio lines. And I'd be like, okay, I got it. And I'd do it over and over until it was perfect. I was like, and don't put it out if it's not. Uh, and then they put it out there and everybody's like, yo, how did you do that if you don't speak Portuguese? I was like, I gotta give it to those guys because they gave me the space to do it and achieve it. So yeah. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Great question. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, and thank you guys for being thank here. Let's give guys. it up to Josh and Johnny for being here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, guys.